This is Tim Jones with TheRealTimJones.com and today we are going to replace the guts of a toilet. Now they're down inside here. You can get one of these which is just a complete toilet repair kit from Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, any hardware store. This is the complete kit. They sell each individual part but if you're going to replace the whole guts you may as well get the complete kit. There may be pieces you don't need but that's okay because the price difference is minimal. And then of course they come with instructions, but we're just going to show you how to do it today. So, here we go. Here's the tools you're going to need for this project. A long straight slot screwdriver, a channel lock pliers, maybe two different sizes, the complete toilet repair kit, and you can see all the things that come in it, including the float valve, the flapper, and the flush handle, everything that you need for this project. So, take the lid off, it just comes off with your hands, no big deal. This toilet has just already been drained, but normally you would want to come down here and turn off the water at the valve. We're going to start by taking apart the old guts, starting with this toilet handle. Most things, as you can see, will be done with your hands, but you may need a straight slot screwdriver or channel lock to take some of the components apart. Here we're going to take the old float valve out. So I just disconnected the water supply from the tank. That did require a channel lock to get it off. Sometimes it's just a hand loosened nut though. It's always good to have a couple towels around when you're working on any plumbing because there's going to be water. And this filler is very tight on here also so it does require a little loosening with the channel locks. Okay so now we're going to take the tank off the back. And like I said that just takes a long straight slot screwdriver. It can be short you just have to stick your hand way down and you don't get as much leverage. You want to loosen the nuts and screws alternately so that you don't crack the tank. The second screw that we're taking out is spinning the nut underneath it. So you just need to get the channel locks under there and hold that nut in place while you unscrew the screw. Here you can see the old screw on the right that we took out of the tank. The kit comes with a new screw and new gasket. You want to make sure to use that new screw with the new gasket so that you don't have any leaking from your tank. You can see this old one is pretty damaged compared to the new one. We got the two screws out holding the tank on. You can see it's loose now. And you just, all you do is pick that up. And it sticks a little to that old gasket. But then, you, then your tank is off. And you'll want to pull this old gas, gasket out. You can see this old gasket is leaving some residue behind. You do need to get that out so that the new gasket will create a good seal between the tank and the base of the toilet. You can see here we're just using our flathead screwdriver to scrape away all that gasket residue to get a good seal for the next gasket. Here we're going to take out the last piece of the toilet tank. And this is where we're going to need that bigger channel lock that I have here. And you always want to have that big side of the channel lock where you're applying force. That's how they work best. You can see that big side right there, always on the side of the nut where you're applying force. And you just get that loose and then you can hand loosen it the rest of the way off of that stem. And then just pop that down through there. Again, you'll want to make sure this part of the tank also is clear of residue from the old gasket so that you get a good seal here. That's the new flapper assembly. We got this all cleaned off. I'm just going to set this on the edge of the base of the toilet. Take that new flapper assembly, put it down in there just like the old one. cool thing about this is you just tore apart the old tank. It's going to go back together in reverse order. Makes it nice and easy. What to make sure of is this flapper assembly doesn't cover up the screw holes that hold the tank on the base. So you twist this around until it's sitting in such a way that you can still access that screw. You just tighten that back on, just like the old one. Nice and tight. Do it by hand first. And once it's hand tight, you want to come back around and make sure that whole assembly is still situated the way you want it. So here we're just going to complete the tightening of this nut. 
The new one's actually a little bit bigger, so that's why it's good to have the channel lock so you can adjust that size. Oh. Or we can just do it here. So right. here, just overdub what you're doing, and I'll just film right here. All right, so now you've got the, old, the new gasket going on. You want that angled part facing down towards the toilet. This is the part that's gonna cover up your nut and base. And it actually just fits around this circumference. It's a little tight, which is what you want. And you just get that situated nice and tight on there. It doesn't come all the way flush down to the tank. It just sits like that. Okay, now that you have that gasket in place, we're just gonna set the tank back down on the base, rock it back and forth a little bit to get that gasket good and set. Now that we got the tank on, you've gotta put the new screws, gaskets, washer, and nut on. Again, same as taking it off, when you put it back on, you want to tighten alternately so you don't crack the tank. And it doesn't have to be super tight, just tight enough to hold the tank on because otherwise you could crack that porcelain tank and you don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm just holding the nut with my fingers, keep it from spinning around, and alternating sides, so you don't crack the tank. The cone and shank washer come as a single piece with the kit, so you do need to separate the two. You can see it here as one piece. Here we're just using an X-Acto knife to separate those two. You want to make sure these edges on the shank washer are nice and clean so it has a tight fit against the shank. There's two different sides to this shank washer. You want to make sure the cone is facing down towards the tank itself and then just slide it onto the shaft until it's flush. Now we're going to attach the hose that goes from the float valve to the flapper assembly. This is what's going to be used to fill the tank. Yeah. Okay, so right there is the nipple that's on the float valve assembly. And we're just going to push the hose onto that. And then this slides onto your flapper valve assembly, like so. Now we're going to put in the flush handle, and it just slides into this hole. You have to angle it in a little bit, and get it set in there just right. It's like a normal flush handle would work. And then we're going to slide the nut on. Remember this is a reverse threaded nut, so it's not righty-tighty lefty loosey it's the opposite. Now that the flush handle is in place we're just going to attach the chain from the flapper to the flush handle. You do that with the chain and the hook. You can adjust it by changing which link you hook the handle to. You can see that our water supply line already has the cone washer so you don't need this one. Just Stick the cone inside the float valve assembly base and tighten it, and then finish with the channel lock. Now we're just going to slowly turn the water back on, just allowing a little water into the tank so that we can check for leaks around all the fittings here where the tank is attached to the base, and where the water supply line is attached, and the float valve is attached. All of these are possible areas for leaks, and you want to check that before you turn the water on full blast. Once your tank fills up and you've flushed it, you may need to adjust the flapper valve and or the float valve assembly. These are both very easy adjustments. The float valve is adjusted with a Phillips head screwdriver and you can just adjust that chain for the flapper valve. But just get the flushing working properly. And then just put your cover back on and you have a brand new toilet. <laughs>